guys? I'm Bobby. I'm Brent. And you're watching Vlearning. So today what we're going to do is we're going to teach you how to do that cool little 80s intro that we just showed you. Yeah, that was pretty sick, huh? It was... I mean, look at us. I mean... I feel like we kind of have to make that a real show now. Oh yeah. What we showed you was our little intro sequence and uh, we're not going to show you how we made the entire thing. Uh, for example, the intro in the beginning where the text the actual, pops the up. The animated text part. We're not going to show you yeah. that one today. Yeah, we're not going to show you that. We actually got that from a uh, another YouTube channel. Uh, it was a great tutorial, so we're going to leave that in the link below. We're going to show you how to do mainly the VHS looking effect. Yeah, so that kind of like funky tape distortion that you see that kind of comes down the screen. And also that just general kind of 80s feel that the whole video has. We're going to show you how to do that to your footage. YouTube school in sesh. So what we're going to do is first we're going to open up After Effects because this is mainly done in After Effects. Yes. Not Premiere. So the first cool. thing that we're going to do today is we're going to basically create a uh, sort of offset looking color effect with the video. Which video are we going to use today? Um, I don't know. There's so many good choices. My epic run to the camera. And, I think uh, we're going to use your epic run because... Yeah, that was pretty good. It I was... mean, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I might be the best actor of my generation. So basically, we dragged the video in, and what it's done is it's uh, it's sort of made it smaller than we want it. Okay. So we're going to click on the layer over here, and I've already done this, but I can undo it. Sure. If you hit the S button on the keyboard, uh, it'll bring up the scale. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's also true with a few different ones. So if you hit P, it'll bring up position. That's also true. So we're going to bring up the scale to fit the screen here. I think that's looking pretty good. Nice. So here we have your, a video of you running, and uh, I think we're going to start you from right about there. Is that fair? That feels pretty good. Mid-stride. Look at that. Look at that action there. Mid-stride. So we're going to hit our Alt key on the keyboard, and we're going to select our Open Bracket key. And nice. what that does is it makes a cut, and we can drag that over and place it in the beginning. Okay, so our video starts here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a box blur to the video. Oh, okay. So we're going to go into our effects over here. And we're going to search box blur. So once we've added the box blur, basically what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to make the video a little bit blurry. Uh, if you look at old VHS videos, they're very blurry and... Yeah, the quality's degraded, quality. so it kind of creates, you know, a blur as a result. Yeah. Or, so, or we want it to look blur. like that. We want it to look a little less than perfect. If we go to our box blur effects up here, we're going to set the blur radius to 1. And you can see that kind of, you know, if you turn the effect on and off, but you can so sort of see... You can sort of see, it might even be hard to see in this tutorial, but yeah, if you really crank it up, you can yeah. see that's kind of... You can see sort of what wild. it does, what it's yeah. supposed to be doing. So we can actually even crank it up to somewhere around like two, because I feel like... To really kind of illustrate the, the point there. Yeah, we want it to be a little blurry, and mm -hmm. I think that's really helping start to make the video look a little older. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some grain. Cool. So if you search for the add grain effect, and it is called add grain, it's a little weird. Um, you'd think it'd just be grain, but it's add grain. So if you search add grain here, We'll drag that onto our video. Okay. And see, right now it's in preview viewing mode, which is going to create this little white box here. So if you put it in final output, that'll go away. Yeah, then you actually can see the whole video, what it looks like. You can see the whole video. You can video. really see it, particularly like in the background and stuff right now. Mm. The little specks there. See how it That's creates that, that really flat looking, um, sort of old camera style effect. Mm -hmm. A lot of older cameras have that, that natural film grain. Mm -hmm. And this sort of recreates it for you and you can, Make it a little more intense, um, but I, I would say that's intense. far too intense. That's like trying to get it in with the rabbit ears and oh, your yeah. old TV, you're messing around. You really want to see that episode of Family Matters, and you're just yeah. kind of messing around. Oh, What's Urkel going to do this week? on right. Is Urkel going to ask for some cheese, please? So we've added our noise effect. I think it looks pretty good here. Mm -hmm. uh, the next step is to go to the effects in the top, and we're going to go to our channel drop down, and okay. we're going to find set channels okay so this has created this control panel over here where you can sort of control um, the red green and blue okay so in order to have three different channels what we're gonna need to do is we're going to need to take our layer here and we're gonna need to duplicate it twice okay so we're going to hit our command D double dupe and command D again now we have three different channels. Cool. So let's just uh, make this a little easier on us. So we're going to rename these to red, blue, and rename this one to green. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our set channels here and we're going to shut off green and we're going to shut off blue. Oh, okay. It's already looking different now. Yep. Oh if yeah, look see, at that. There's Oof. the set to red source, set to green source, and set to blue source. Oh man. Uh, so we can, yeah, we can shut those off. So this I'm is basically old. our red channel. I'm seeing red now. Yeah, Oof. that's crazy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I got like, I got the killer instinct in my eyes and that's right Yeah, that now. is evil Brent right there. Yeah. Let's shut that one off. Okay. So that we can see the layer below. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to shut off red and green so that we're left with just blue. See? Cool blue. It's blue now. Now we're going to shut that one off and do the same thing for green. So we're going to shut off red and blue. <laughs> and blue. And there we have green. Yeah. So now we have green, blue, and red. So what I just did is I turned the layers back on. We shut them off so that we could see what we were doing, but now they're all back on. We have three different layers. This doesn't look very good. Yeah, it just kind of looks red right now. It looks red, so what we have to do is we have to turn our transfer mode to add. So what that will do is it'll sort of combine all the layers so that it has the original red, green, blue look. Oh, okay. See how it kind of looks back to the normal there? Nice. So now what that's done is it's created three different layers of each color channel. Okay. Sort of like the original VHS tapes. So what we can do now is if we select all of these different layers and hit our P key like we were doing earlier, it'll bring up the position for everything. If you look at these numbers, if you don't know what this means, basically on the left it's going to be um, horizontal movement, and on the right side here that's uh, vertical movement. So X and Y. We're going to want to offset our channels a little bit to give it sort of that doubling effect. So we're just going to take our left side here and we're going to drag it a little bit to the right. You see what that's doing? Oh yeah, yeah, you can see it like moving. Up. Oh, okay, that's really cool. You can see the whole layer moving and basically you can see that it's red there and behind it is the green and blue combined. So I'm gonna undo that to put it back to the center and I'm gonna move it ever so slightly because this was not really too noticeable back in the day. It was just sort of a, a side effect, if you will. Yeah, I mean, everyone had standard definitions. This is just the way stuff looked, and sometimes the three channels didn't blend perfectly. Yeah. weren't perfectly aligned, so you get this kind of interesting little, almost has some, almost like a glow effect yeah, in a it's, way. It's, it's so it's strange. It's kind of a cool look. It's a very cool look, and you can actually adjust it throughout the video, set keyframes so that mm. it kind of goes on and off. Right. I prefer it being on the whole time because I think it looks better that way. Yeah. Um, but let's let's do another one real quick, so we'll show you how different we can make this look. So now we're going to take the blue layer and we're going to change the vertical position. And we're going to sort of lower that a little bit, make Brent's eyes look yellow. Yeah, my eyebrows look even more intense now too. Yeah, you see what that's doing? That's creating a very, very cool looking effect there. Um, now we can go overboard a little bit or we can just do it very slightly. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I like doing it a little more slightly than overboard. Bobby's a subtle guy. He likes to be subtle. See, that's overboard. Yeah. Though it kind of looked more manly. It looked more too. manly, yeah. <laughs> I had more chiseled features there. Brent looks like <laughs> Brent looks like an action star right there. I look like Christian Bale now. All right. So now time for part D of this tutorial where we're going to show you how to do a little video distortion effect. If you ever watched an old VHS tape, um, you might notice every once in a while, particularly if it's like a really crappy VHS tape, that every once in a while I get this like weird bar that will kind of just shimmy on down. It's basically where the tape kind of gets a little busted up or stretched out a little bit and it creates this little bit of a uh, distortion that kind of goes down the screen as that particular piece of tape rolls yeah, by. Comes so right down the center. We're going to show you how to recreate that now in After Effects. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take all of Bobby's great work he just did here. I'm going to pre-comp it real quick. We'll call this our RGB footage. Cool. Yeah. So now that's all happily together. So and we don't have to composition. In one composition, so we don't have to worry about accidentally adjusting anything here. It's just one full thing now. And so now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new solid into our layer. We're going to keep it a black solid because that's kind of what we want here. Um, all this other stuff looks to be pretty much what we want, so we'll hit OK. And it's on top, which is where we want it to be. Now, the next thing we need to do is go over to our effects and presets uh, tab again. And we're going to look up the effect Bad TV. Ooh, Bad TV. That's and cool um, you can use any one of these that you want. For this example, we're going to use the weak Bad TV effect. And we'll throw that on our black solid. And as you can see, there's always some kind of cool stuff going on here. 
I mean, this is a little too intense for what we want, but wow. you can see how it's kind of distorting the footage. You get these little lines and stuff. All these weird things that are going on here. So we're gonna be using some of this to kind of create our little distortion nice. effect. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create now a white solid layer. So oh, let's do it. solid layer. Yep. This one's gonna, you're gonna see how this is gonna work out in just a minute. Yeah, I'm curious. All right, so now we got our white solid layer. We'll hit okay. And then, <laughs> and now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pre-comp these two layers together. So we're just working on these two. So now Brad, some of the viewers might be wondering, when you make a pre-comp, can you then open the pre-comp back up and, and continue editing? Yeah, it's a composition. Absolutely, that's actually what we're going to be doing next. Ooh. So th that's a very astute observation of you, Bobby. So we're, I'm going to just quickly rename this one um, Tape Distortion. So later on, we know what this is. All right, so I just double clicked on my pre comp to open the layers. So now I see I got my white and my black solid here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over my white solid here. I'm going to select it. Then I'm also going to select this uh, rectangular shape tool. And I'm just going to create a skinny little bar over here, Whoa. like so. All right, so well, now we have our little box here. This is going to be creating our mask effect. Now, this is kind of important. We're actually, we probably should have mentioned this earlier. We upgraded to um, 2017 um, for Adobe Premiere and After Effects. Yeah. So um, there's some things that seem to be slightly different. For one thing, um, for us to move just our mask and not the whole layer, what we need to do is we need to go down into our white solid here under go to masks, select mask path, and then we need to click on one of these nodes here to move it. Otherwise you will actually end up moving the whole layer and that will kind of like throw off the effect that we're trying to create yeah. here. So now that we got our mask out of frame, we're going to create a keyframe by clicking the little stopwatch here at the beginning mask path. Then I'll go forward not too long because we don't want it to take forever to render. So we'll go just like couple seconds here or whatever. Then we're gonna grab this again. We're gonna scoot <clears throat> down to the bottom here. Now we've created ourselves a new keyframe. We can see here our little bar move through. It doesn't look exactly the way we wanted to just yet, but we got the animation that we're looking for, which is to have this little bar kind of going down the screen as we go. So now that that's complete, the next thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to go to our transfer mode for this mask and we're gonna switch it now to subtract. So now, as we go through, now when the bar is going through, so let's set it to fit so you can see just a little bit better what's going on. As it's scrolling through, we're getting our distortion now. That's what we're seeing. Yeah, you can see it in that little black box. Right. So now this is kind of, we're getting a little bit closer to where we want to be. So now that we've done that, we're going to go back to our main um, screen that we were working on. We're done working this pre-comp for now. Okay. So we're going to go back here. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our effects screen here and we're going to search for displacement map, this little guy right Ooh. here, and we're going to throw that onto our footage layer. Okay. Now next thing we need to do once we do that, we need to reset where the displacement map is going to. So we're going to set it to tape distortion. So now that we've done that, you're, it still looks the same, you're kind of like, what's going on here? So next thing we need to do is we need to change our transfer mode now on our tape distortion pre-comp to multiply. So all of a sudden here we are. Now sometimes you'll, when we do this, there will be a little bit of uh, white showing on the side. We don't want that, so let's go ahead. We're gonna hit S again for scale. Um, we'll scale this up just a tiny bit. We don't want much, just enough to get rid of that white. So even I think 1% is gonna be enough. So one, one, yeah. so one on one, perfect. perfect yeah. Okay, so now that we've set that to multiply, if we kind of scrub through our timeline here a little bit, we can see the effect happening. Oh yeah, there it is. See how that's doing there? So we got this going on now. So this is, again, not exactly where we want it to be, but it's close. So the next thing we want to do is we're gonna to want to adjust our opacity here. So we're gonna to go to the opacity, which is down here, and we're gonna, lower it a bit until it looks the way we want to. You really want it to be subtle, so you really only want it to be just a bit. So this is looking pretty good at 20%. It's looking really good. You see how it's kind of like distorting the footage, it's kind of moving my forehead right now, slightly yeah. off. That's kind of what we want to happen here, is to so have- So it's gonna scroll down and move everything as it 
Exactly. So that's, that's really cool. Yeah, that looks so. a lot like a, a real VHS effect. All right, so that's basically it. So you got your nice little tape distortion here. It was a little bit complicated, but you know, I think it's a worthwhile effect. So um, that's pretty much it. That's how you do. This makes your video look 80s. Now we know? also used a green screen effect in the video and you can check out how to do that here. Yep. We have another video on how to do green screens. So you, if you uh, watch the video that we used for the intro and our green screen video here, you can pretty much create exactly what we did for our intro. Yeah. So now you know. Awesome. Thanks for watching this episode of Learning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bobby. I'm Brent. And you're watching. <laughs> Alright, guys, so thanks for watching this episode. And uh, we're about to show you the blooper reel. We're leaning back. We're leaning, leaning back, back to do this. We're chill. We're chilling out. We're chill. We're so man chill. spreading. <laughs> yeah. We're going to show you the blooper reel of uh, that last video. So enjoy. Here you go. No, I was going to say Liam Neeson. Um, yeah, a little bit. Maybe a combo. I have to find my children. I got a certain set of Skittles. <laughs> Batman. They apparently they say Skittles? <laughs> yeah, Skittles. I got I got a combination of a purple and red bag of Skittles. A whole rainbow of Skittles. Now you can only have some if you give me my daughter back. <laughs> Talia. Alright, this is the part where we wait while it renders. If it even will. I don't think it will. <laughs> I think it's looking old. It's looking VHS, -ish. VHS ish. Mm -hmm. If you watch some more VHS, eight, bleh, v now it's so say, hard to say. VHS is so hard to say. It's not. It's, it's not good. Easy. I'm so glad it's gone. Okay. Cole. What did Cole! we say? What did we say? <laughs> what did we say? No. Cole is the Ice Man, just ruining everything right now. Ice. Freeze! Uh, I was thinking of a different ice man. I'm talking Top Gun here, but that's okay. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm thinking of Arnold Schwarzenegger. That was ah! absolutely. Oh, I'm in the driver's seat now. Hopefully, I don't have acid reflux back here. I'm in the driver's seat now, man. Uh, so now we're gonna swap sides, and Brent's gonna show you yes. how to do a distortion. In the thing. '80s style, we're wingmen today. Bobby is the maverick to my goose, and now Goose is gonna take over. Ah! <laughs> Optical illusion. It's an illusion. It's definitely there. It's. It's, it's just, an illusion. Uh, it's just, it's probably part of the effect.